This is WLNE, Channel 6 in New Bedford, Massachusetts. Good morning. Ah, yes, the pristine Sierra Madres, a beautiful mountain range separating the state of Calisota from the Aravada Territory. However, today the normal serenity is being disturbed by a ruckus, a ruckus that seems to be coming from the First National Bank. Give me all your money. But ma'am, I only have 38 cents on me. No dimwit, not your money, the bank's money. Oh, well, you should have been more specific. Oh, no! Could it be? Yes! It's that villainous villain, Fanny. You were expecting Mickey Mouse? All right, ma'am. Here's your money. I'll just need you to sign this. Sign what? This withdrawal slip. What? Well, you're taking money out of the bank, right? Yes? So you can only take out cash with the withdrawal slip. This threw Fanny for a bit of a loop. But she was too flustered to shoot the teller, so she just signed the slip and walked out. Unfortunately for her, the bank was surrounded by the Lake Tally Ho Sheriff, 23 deputies, 6 U.S. soldiers, 4 Aravada Rangers, and a hot dog vendor. With all these people, I'll make a killing. You're not the only one, bub. Fanny took one look at the crowd and walked right back into the bank. Welcome back, ma'am. Are you here to make a deposit? What? No, I... Well, then, if you're here for a withdrawal, I'm sorry to tell you that we're short on cash. I know that. Look, is there a back way out of here? There is the employee entrance. Well, where is it? Are you a bank employee? No. Well, I'm sorry, ma'am. It's restricted for employees only. For security reasons, you know. Fanny at this point was very tempted to shoot the teller, but realized that if she did, the police would storm the building. Ugh. Well, is there a fire escape? Of course. But let me guess. Because the building isn't on fire, you're not going to show it to me, are you? That is correct, ma'am. Fanny fortunately had a Molotov cocktail on her, so she lit it and tossed it at some curtains, which went up in spectacular fashion. And just for good measure, she pulled the fire alarm. Unfortunately, that also set off the sprinkler system. Oh dear, we should evacuate. It could get dangerous in here. Yeah, for one of us at least. <laughs> If holiday shopping's not going your way, why not make it a Bradley's day? Stop. Now the puppy, you're my one and only puppy love. Fanny was finally out of the bank, but it didn't do her much good as the police had both ends of the alleyway blocked off. Unfortunately, one officer had greasy hands from one of the hot dogs and dropped his gun, which went off. This caused the police at the other end of the alley to think Fanny had opened fire on them. The cops started firing down the alley. However, as they were at both ends of the alley, they ended up hitting each other, which just made the remaining cops even more aggressive. Well, this is a fine pickle. And speaking of pickles... Fanny dove into the delicatessen. She stopped to steal a sandwich, but the owner insisted she pay for it. Not wanting to deal with a man of his immense size, she obliged. Out in the street, she found it deserted as the cops were still too busy shooting each other in the alley. Luckily for her, there was an automobile dealership across the road. There's my ticket out of this joint. Hey, you! Yes, ma'am. Are you interested in a new car? Yeah, that speedster. Does it really go 60 miles an hour? <laughs> yes, ma'am. And it can hit that in only 30 seconds. And cop cars barely break 50, right? Only on a downhill, last I checked. They are made by our competitor, after all. Fine, I'll take this one for a test drive. 
I'm sorry, ma'am. You cannot. I'm sorry, what? The last person who took one of these out managed to dump it in a lake. You will need to pay for it before I can let it out of here. Do you not see the gun? Give me the keys or else. I'm sorry, ma'am, but if his car is gone, my boss will rake me over the coals. Again? I have a gun. I'm sorry, but he scares me more than you do. Fanny, realizing she was getting nowhere, did the only thing she could. She spent the next half hour in the dealer's office signing papers and titles. Finally, after handing over a sizable chunk of cash, she was given the keys. By now, the cops had realized their mistake and quickly spotted her. They tried to keep up, but the Maxwell Speedster was too quick. Unfortunately, it was also quickly running out of gas. Quick, give me 20 gallons and step on it. That'll be $6 up front. $6? That's highway robbery! As Fanny paid the attendant, the cops surrounded the station. Her car blocked. She rushed inside, taking the attendant with her. Come on out, Fennec. You're surrounded. There's no escape this time. Things look dire for our Fanny. But if she's anything, it's a quick thinker. Hey, buddy. Bum a light? Here you go. Well, hey, wait. This is a gas station. There's no smoking. It could cause an explosion. That's what I'm hoping for. And with that, Fanny tossed the cigarette through the window at the gas now spilling out of her car. The explosion rocked the surrounding countryside. Fanny used this minor distraction to once again sneak out the back. Two days later, a sore and singed Fanny finally made it back to Fanny Pack HQ. Here's the take. I went through a car chase, a shit out, an explosion to get that. You went through all that for 37 cents? Yes! In her attempt to escape, Fanny had actually spent almost every dime of her score! Which just goes to show you that crime doesn't pay. Oh, it pays all right. It just pays really poorly. Join us next time where we'll see if Fanny actually makes some cash in Fanny Comes Up Tales, or It Makes Sense. <laughs>